Hey everybody, it is Jed and welcome back to another Division video. Now yesterday's video had pretty awkward timing because as I was uploading I actually tuned into a 1.4 stream and I got to see so many of the new things that are coming out in 1.4. So I decided to put together another list of things that are actually going to happen in 1.4. This isn't going to be rumors. This isn't going to be stuff I've heard from other people. This is going to be things I saw in the stream from the developers. And a little bit of a disclaimer for the people watching my videos from all the non-30 brackets and you don't really play in the 30 bracket that much, 1.4 is dedicated to fixing the end game. That means that they're not going to care about our bracket or how PvP or PvE functions for 1 through 30. Now sure, some of these changes might affect us, but their target with this update is to fix the end game. Now I'm unsure if all some or none of these changes are actually going to apply to us so when 1.4 rolls around and you see no changes done whatsoever to the 1 through 14 bracket don't be too surprised now that that's out of the way let's get right into this so the first thing that I want to talk about is skills they reworked a bunch of skills and I think I'm gonna go through and name off each skill and how they've been changed so the first skill I'm gonna talk about is pulse which actually got a pretty big nerf not much was changed about it but it does affect the effectiveness of the pulse quite a bit as far as crit chance and crit damage on the pulse those all have been tuned down quite a bit and when it comes to tactical scanner you no longer get additional crit chance off the pulse you're only gonna get bonus critical hit damage next up is the first aid which got a really big nerf but at the same time it was also kind of buffed so the biggest change that I think everyone's probably wondering about is now when you throw it on the ground you can only get one heal off of it you can't keep running in and out of it and procking triage and just getting everything back and being overpowered that's no longer a thing but something that was really really interesting which I think is actually gonna curve PvE quite a bit I think everyone's going to be running defib now because now when you shoot a dead teammate it's going to bring them back to life and no this does not work in the dark zone if you get jumped by four people you can't expect a teammate to throw a defib on you and get back up and get your revenge that's not going to be happening this is only going to work in pve the overdose was actually changed up quite a bit it is mainly focused around solo players because now the self heal has been buffed so you're going to get more of a benefit out of it but your teammates aren't going to get that much of a benefit and as far as booster goes nothing really changed about booster they said that they might tweak the damage values as far as how much damage you get and the mitigation you get from it but as of right now there are no set changes to it and the last thing about the heal in general is that they've completely removed the delay the moment you press that button you're getting healed for it and the moment that you throw it down on the ground you get the benefit from it so let's say your teammate died and you run defib the second that that heal lands on your teammate, he's getting brought back to life. Or at least that's how I'd assume it work, unless they intentionally add delay in reviving the teammate. But as far as I know, there's no delay anymore in the heals. The animation still plays, which can stop you from firing, but the healing effect procs instantly. Next up is the support station. Now I don't know exactly what is being changed about it. All I know is that they did say it was getting a buff. So I don't know if it's going to heal more, which is probably what I think everyone would assume because you don't really get healed for it. It just kind of sits there and gives you like whatever mod you put on. Next up is the sticky bomb, which actually got a pretty understandable nerf to it. They didn't actually mention anything about the sticky bomb. Just the only thing that I did notice was that the cooldown for the sticky bomb was significantly increased. If my memory is good enough, I remember that the BFB had a base cooldown of about 60 seconds. And now in 1.4, it's starting to push around 80 seconds. Somewhere in the 80 second mark i don't know if the damage values have been touched on it all i know is that the cooldowns have been increased next up is actually a pretty damn cool change and that is that they buff the hell out of the turret. I think everyone can agree that there's really no point in running anything other than fire turret and shock turret just for the amount of crowd control that it gives. The base damage has been buffed on the turret so now you're able to put the pulse mod on it and actually be able to do damage with it. And not only was that buffed but the reduced health of the NPCs that's also gonna really increase the time to kill for that turret. I figured this would be a good time to talk about it even though I don't plan on talking about gear sets in this video but Firecrest has been changed so now you deal extra damage to targets that are on fire and it also buffs the flame turret quite a bit and everyone is starting to say everyone start farming some Firecrest because that is going to be the new meta. Setting people on fire and then just getting the bonus damage off of it. I hope not, that sounds like a pretty boring meta, but hey, that's just what everyone's saying. Next up is the Ballistic Shield, which it didn't really get a buff or a nerf, it just 
got fixed so it actually functions properly. Next up is Smart Cover, which got a nerf, I guess. I, I, it's still kind of a buff, but it it's not as effective as it was before. With NPCs having a much, much lower time to kill, to make up for that, they made weapons really bouncy, so you're actually going to need to stack stability and like increased accuracy to actually put people down. And that's exactly what the smart cover does. It gives you accuracy and it gives you stability along with damage reduction. So smart cover is definitely going to help. It's not useless, but it's definitely not as strong as it used to be. Now let's talk about the signature skills, which all got reworked. And the one that I am most excited for, I just think this is so cool because I had always told people this is how Recovery Link should work and they finally did it. So now when you have Recovery Link on and you're playing solo, if you get downed, Recovery Link is going to bring you back to life. Now I always thought that this should work in groups. If you get downed and you're playing with other agents, you should be able to pop Recovery Link and bring yourself back to life along with other agents. And I thought that would be a good idea if Tactical Link and Survivor Link stayed the exact same way. I thought that would bring Recovery Link into the meta so people would actually start using it. But now I understand why they did it exclusive to solo players because Tactical Link and Survivor Link kind of got reworked too. I think it's safe to say that most people use Survivor Link, which is why it now got a nerf. It is now giving you a 50% damage reduction. I think that was the only change to it. So the change made to Tactical Link was actually pretty big. I think this one is pretty cool. The damage that you get off of Tactical Link now has been nerfed. You used to get 50% damage increase. Now it's only 30% increase. But I think they equal that one out with the increased fire rate that you get and the increased reload speed that you now get. I think it's 50% each, which if you have a max fire rate gun and you pop tactical link, I just want to know what that's like. You were going to empty clips so unbelievably fast with extra damage and crit chance and reload speed, you are going to be overpowered for 10 seconds. So now that all the skill changes are out of the way, let's get into gear changes. So Massive and I were thinking about the same thing as far as performance mods go. They aren't really used and there's really not a point to running them over something like extra stamina or firearms. So now what they've done is they have added performance mod slots on your gear so now you can buff certain skills or certain aspects of a build while also having other mod slots giving you stamina and firearms. The slots which you're going to have performance mods on are going to be your backpack. You're going to have two slots on your backpack for performance mods, one on your holster and an extra one on your knee pads. But anyways, the last change on this list is going to be weapon mods. Weapon mods are now going to roll with two major attributes and then a guaranteed attribute. For example, suppressors, their guaranteed attribute is reduced threat. You're now going to be able to roll, let's say, crit damage and crit chance and reduce threat on it. Another example would be an extended magazine. You're gonna be able to get extended mag, rate of fire, and reload speed. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, wow, that's really damn strong. But what they did to counter how many stats you can now have on a weapon, they've tuned them down quite a bit. On the stream, I think a purple mod gave like 3% crit chance, which normally was like six or seven. So I think that's pretty cool. It's gonna allow for you to really build into something on a weapon. You can have a bunch of major attributes and just have it excel at a certain thing but other than that I can't really think of anything that is too major that I left out of this video I know weapon rebalancing is coming pretty soon in the future so I'm definitely gonna be making a video on that that is the most important thing to me they just need to fix the shotgun meta completely make every gun in the game relevant able to compete with one another but yeah I think that's it hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in my next one peace out everybody